Greetings, Tubidors, and a Happy New Year! May 2020 bring you all that you want, unless you're one of these pseudoscientific, common sense denying flatards, then may 2020 simply bring you all that you deserve. Happy days indeed. Now, my last couple of videos um, have been addressing the profound retardation of a couple of the more well-known flurfers, and I was going to make a third video um, about a YouTuber who, in true flat ad fashion, released a video this week that is so laughable that when I first watched it, I genuinely thought that it was a piece of satire. Um, this particular individual goes by the name of uh, Flatline the Globe is Dead. There they are, right there. Now, I'm sure many of you will come across this individual's channel, and if you've watched the video that I'm talking about, um, if you also have a reasonable understanding of mathematics, um, or just some basic common sense, you recognise that their application of numbers, to support their argument, is a bit like Eric Morecambe's approach to playing the piano. All the right notes, just not necessarily in the right order. That reference might fall a bit short for um, some of our, shall we say, non-British um, viewers, but uh, just put Eric Morecambe, all the right notes, into YouTube. You'll soon find out what I mean. Now, this allows them to make a presentation that to the uneducated conspiracist <laughs> will appear to be rooted in something approximating a scientific method of approach. Um, now, during Flatline's video, I became very much aware that his explanations purporting to support a flat earth were nothing more than, you know, the usual word salad. But I also came to realise that Flatline, along with a lot of the other more prominent Flat Earth advocates, have started to frequently now apply a variant of a tactic that is based on a debate method used by um, evangelical Christian apologists, which has become known as the Gish Gallop. Now, the term was coined by a physical anthropologist and biologist Professor Eugenie Carroll Scott. That's her there, remarkable woman. She used it to describe the debate tactics of the young earth and creationist advocate, the late Dwayne Gish. That's him there. Not so remarkable. Um, when Gish was engaged in a debate with atheists and uh, evolutionists, he would often bombard his opponent with a, a rapid-fire series of superficial and misleading statements that, with no regard to their, you know, uh, validity, their accuracy, or their honesty, and the intention being that their opponent wouldn't have the opportunity to address even a small fraction of them during the deba debate, and Gish could then claim victory despite having talked nonsense. Um, and what many of these prominent flat earthers do then is use that quickfire multiple statement tactic at their own followers, knowing full well that the majority of them are either unlikely or just unable to verify those statements, so that they will take them on faith. So, sensible advocates of the frequently proven globe earth, let's coin a phrase today. The inner circle gallop. The tactic of presenting multiple statements to your followers as truth, despite those statements being absolute nonsense. Anyway, onward. Let's get to the crux of this video. A challenge for the flat earthers, as the heading of this presentation suggests. Uh, now, I challenge all those flat earthers, both secular and theist, who consider the earth to be a large disk in space, um, devoid of any curvature, with the sun and the moon both circling above the disk, regardless of there being any explanation for the physical mechanisms which would keep those bodies behaving up there in that way. Um, now, the sun, without a telescope, um, certainly without a telescope fitted with a solar filter, looks pretty much the same at any time of the day. The moon, however, now the moon is the globus friend because it would look, it will look different depending on your latitude, latitude on the globe. Yes, globe. Now those of us up here in the Northern Hemisphere, um, Phases and liberation aside, because that's sort of, you know, negligible, um, are used to seeing the moon looking like this. Um, this is a, a picture that I took in February 2017. Here is the crater Tycho, named after Tycho Brahe, the prominent 16th century astronomer 
um, and also proud wearer of a silver nose after a fair chunk of his was cut off during a duel with his third cousin in 1566. Now, those of you who live in the southern hemisphere, however, will be used to seeing the moon look like this. This picture was taken in Australia by a, a talented um, astrophotographer called Brendan Keane on the 1st of December 2017. Same moon, considering it's the only one we've got, uh, although I'm sure that someone somewhere will have a crackpot theory of multiple moons. Um, and again, we can see the very prominent Tycho crater. But now it appears, from this perspective of a southern hemisphere dweller, to be much closer to what we could regard a classical north. Now, of course, it hasn't made any lateral rotation, but being as the Earth is a massive sphere, those in the southern hemisphere, um, as far as we northerners are concerned, by our perspective, are upside down. And likewise, those living in the southern hemisphere can regard us in the north as being, relative to them, upside down. And just to prove a point, depending on whether you lived in the northern hemisphere, the southern hemisphere, or on the equator, then the moon, as it rose, would look a bit like this. So, to the challenge. The challenge for all the flat earth advocates that I am putting out there is this. Considering that our moon is such an easily observable um, phenomena, very verifiable, it's up there all the time, you can see it um, several times a year, unless you live in Britain, in which case it's usually raining or cloudy, but when you can see this moon, there it is, sat up there, floating along, beautiful, Luna. We love her. But I would like the Flat Earthers to explain, to the satisfaction of us normal people, how this observation would be possible if we were living on a perfectly flat stationary disk. Now, if we were all living on a perfectly flat plane, it would be impossible to observe the different orientations of the Moon unless we decided to stand on our heads. Or, is it simply that, from the perspective of the Northern Hemisphere, the Southern Hemisphere on a ball is upside down? I think that might be the case. And before any of the Flat Earth community try, and ex try the excuse that Australia doesn't exist, because we know you've all tried and failed before with that one, um, besides, I actually know somebody who is there right now, or that um, another one that's done the rounds is that the Moon is a hologram. And... I know for a fact that it's not a hologram because I personally have bounced radio waves off it with this little beauty. And neither does the moon roll across the sky like some huge celestial soccer ball, as some people have suggested the sun does. But if it did, then the Tycho crater would sometimes appear at lunar north from the northern hemisphere, which it never has and never will unless um, something catastrophic happens, but then flat Earth versus globe Earth would actually be the very least of our worries. So, please, lovely subscribers, non-subscribers, globists, flatists, everyone who sees this. I have never asked this of you before, but please share the hell out of this video, because I really want to see if anybody can come up with a valid explanation um, for this phenomena, you know, using a flat Earth as the model for why we see the moon in different orientations. If you can do it, all power to you. I, however, know that you can't, because we do live on a ball. The moon is a quarter of a million miles away. The sun is 93 million miles away, one astronomical unit. So there's the challenge, flatards. Explain the lateral rotation of the Moon as observed from the Northern and Southern Hemispheres whilst maintaining the premise that the Earth is flat. You will not be able to do it. Right, that's it for today, folks. That is it. That is me. If you've made it this far and you're one of my subscribers, then, as I have already said, I love you very much. If you're not a subscriber, I love you too, so please consider giving that little subscribe button a click. Little Thor is down here. A larger Thor will pop up. 
here in a moment. Give that a click, you subscribed, hit the bell notification, and then YouTube will send you an email on my behalf the next time I upload one of my videos. So, until then, Happy New Year to all. I hope you are all prosperous. I hope you are all healthy. I hope you are all happy. Genuinely, I really hope that for you. So, until next time, be nice to each other. I will catch you a bit further down the road. Au revoir. Yeah.